Hello guys! Welcome to the final episode of this series. In the previous one we discovered our new grooming workflow between Yeti and Unreal. We are now ready to work on the look of the fur with our new shader and later show you how we set up the motion capture system for the animation of the face. Before to start the work on the look development of the fur of the monkey, I just created a quick scene in Unreal. As we are going to use the character only in this demo scene, I choose to set first the lighting of the scene before to work on the look dev of the fur. So in the scene I just add some plums, some rocks for the background and of course a camera. In the final stage we are going to add new shots using Sequencer. So let's start to work on the look dev. In the fair assets window we will need to go in material and create uh, different material slots for how many materials we want. So in this case I created six materials. After that in the strands tab we can see the different partition that we created in the Yeti graph. So for each different attribute that we create with different default number we are going to have a different partition. Also if you go in show and select air groups you can have a preview of the color of each partition in the viewport. And after doing that we are just going to assign the material in the different partition. So let's begin with the body fair. I just created a material instance of our Amplipost fair shader. So in this fair shader we have a lot of attributes to play with. The first one will control if you want to use the fair melanin if we set it to zero or the air melanin if you set it to one. The fair melanin is used if you want uh, air looking uh, more reddish and the melanin is used if you want more brown, brownish fair. So if for example we set to one, we are using the melanin now and we can of course tweak it and set it like to another value to have a darker color and if we set it to a lighter value we are going to have like blonde and then of course white. After this you have control also in the desaturation of the color and as well in the brightness. If we check use root color we are going to be able to color the base of the fair. So in this case we set a black color and here we can choose the position where the black color starts and here you can choose as well the contrast. After we can use the root color blend to blend it with the original color if you want a more softer effect. Use top color does the same but in the opposite direction so in the tip. So here we have white and of course we can set it to the point and here we can play a bit with the contrast if you want more a softer transition or, or an harsher effect. And then we can also blend it as well with the original color. Variation melanin is going to give variation to each single air color. So if for example we push it, here we can choose for example the, a different color. So in this case we want to use the air melanin. And here let's choose a, like a darker color. Let's set it to one. And here we can choose the variation amount, so if we want more like this darker hair color. So if we push it more we can see that all the fair is getting darker and only few hair are keeping the original color. So let's set a lower value. And use extra hair is just another layer of this uh, single hair variation but uh, with uh, fewer attributes. So it's better suited for just darker or brighter color. So in this case we want like uh, for example white hair and here we can choose the amount. So in this case we are going to have few white hair and if we push it we are going to have more white hair. Nice. Then we can control of course the specular, the roughness and if we activate melanin mask B we will be able to assign a texture to create another area with different color in uh, one partition. So in this case we are going to create another section with this uh, brownish color and another one with white hair here using always one partition. So here I just painted a texture painting white in the area where I want a different color and I'm going to drop it here in the mask B section. I'm going also to invert the mask as I want uh, this brownish color to be in the opposite side. So now tweaking these parameters we have the power to affect only this area. So we are changing a bit the brightness here as the fair is uh, white and probably we can also add some soft root color 
So I'm going to add a bit of more contrast to, to see the effects and tweak its position. And after that, I want to blend it with the original color to have a more softer effects. So we can do the same here for the top color. And again, uh, we play a bit with the position and the contrast of the transition. And uh, here we blend it all together. And I want to add also some uh, extra hair. So in this case, I want uh, brighter hair. So let's push the amount of this hair. And also let's change their brightness. I think now it's looking great and we are ready to move on on the other partition. So now I just duplicate that material instance, remove the mask of the brown area and apply it one to the mohawk, another instance to the hair in the face, to the pitch fuzz and also a material instance for the whiskers and the eyebrows hair. So let's do a quick overview of the motion capture setup for the face. So here in Maya we are using this nice plugin for the blend shape that it's called Shapes. Here we are able to just create a new blend shape and then just check it moving the slider. So we create a different blend shape following the hair kit system of Apple. And it's really important that the blend shape name is exactly the same of the one of the documentation. If not, Unreal is not going to read it correctly. When I exported the model and the skeleton as FBX, I make sure that the formed models, so skins and blend shape, were checked on. So there are some face deformations that are controlled by the rotation of the bones, so for example for all the eyes and as well the jaw. To do this I just wrote a list of all the blend shape and assign them to each frame of the timeline in Maya. So for example in frame 1 we have I blink left and in the second frame we have I look down left. After doing that you will just need to export the animation and in a real just click on the animation and create a pose asset and paste all the list of blend shape. In the pose asset I just checked additive and I set as base pose the neutral one that is just the first frame with the neutral pose. After doing that we can check that each one of the blend shape are working correctly. The animation blueprint of the monkey is quite simple. At the beginning we have the live link pose needed to connect the iPhone motion capture to the blueprint. Then we have the pose asset that we created before from the, the animation. As the neutral pose of the model has the jaw open, I had a transform modify bone to add an additional rotation to the jaw and close it. These two transform modify bones are going to take the head rotation from the motion capture and add it in the animation of the character. Before to try the motion capture setup, we will need to bind the groom to the model. To do that, just select the groom and uh, click on create binding and select the target skeletal mesh. We are going to find here a groom binding asset and in the groom component in the blueprint we are going to assign it to the binding asset. I also enable simulation for the partition of the hair. As the fur is long here it would be nice to have some physics on it. And after the setup is done we can animate our little monkey by just using the iPhone camera. For the final video I create a different level sequence, each one with a different shot. And in the final sequence I just add fun playing with the different shots and cutting them, merging them together. And after I just record the animation in the sequence using the iPhone. And here is the final video of the Tamari Monkey. We are really happy about it. We are also amazed by this new workflow to develop a grooming working entity and visualize it in Unreal 5 so quickly. That's all for now, we hope you enjoyed the series and learned some tips. See you soon! Do you want to know more about grooming? Check our new course! This course will start from the basics of grooming and dive in more advanced techniques, giving you the right tools to build your portfolio and start your career as grooming artist. We joined lots of cool projects during this year, from big blockbuster movies to TV commercial, where we develop a solid workflow that is easily adaptable to different kinds of grooms. In the chapter 1, we will focus on the basics of Yeti, introducing the tools and techniques we will need to build amazing grooms. In the chapter 2, we will groom a realistic animal fur and dive in in the grooming workflow we use in our professional works. You will get everything you need for the course, 
including models and lighting scene. Also, you will have access to a private channel in our Discord Antepost Lab, where you can share your work and get feedback from us. So, let's get started! We can't wait to share our experience with you and dive in, in the magic world of grooming!